Go into the word of God. Amen. Amen. This morning, the title of our message is going to be Fighting the Spiritual War. Fighting the Spiritual War. Fighting the Spiritual War. Most of us, we already know how to fight natural battles. We do that with weapons, natural weapons. Amen. Yeah. Guns and uh, fists and all that kind of stuff. But the spiritual war, we need to understand how to fight in the spiritual war. Yeah. But here's one of the main problems that we see among us as Christians is that a lot of us as Christians don't realize that we're in a war, a spiritual war. We, and we get saved and we've been led to believe that once we are saved, God just allows us to go in maybe like a salvation retirement plan. We can just sit back and relax. And there's an old song we used to sing saying, and let the Lord fight my battles. But as we learned in our lesson last week, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul said these words, fight what? The good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Praise God. We got to fight. We're in a spiritual war, and we got to fight. Amen? Amen. And uh, these spiritual battles, we need to know how to deal with them. In our lesson this morning, we, I'm, I'm going to be sharing with you how Israel in the Old Testament, Israel in the Old Testament, how Israel when they were delivered from the land of Egypt to go to where? The promised land. I'm going to show you in scripture how their journey from Egypt to the promised land is very similar to what we see in the traditional church today. We see the same things happening. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to show you in the scripture how that the scripture lets us see Israel's journey from Egypt is so much like the journey we should be taking today. Amen. Out of the world of sin. We started last week in 1 Timothy chapter 6. It says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some coveted after, and they have erred from the faith. That's the thing that causes people to turn from the faith, the love of money. Amen. And, it, and they pierced themselves through with what? Many sorrows. But in verse 11, he says, But thou, O man. In other words, he's talking to us, Christians. He said, Flee these things and follow after righteousness. In other words, don't you be in love with money. Don't you do the things that the world does. You be content with living godly. You be content with the things you have. Because he said also in the same book, he said, For they that will be rich will fall into many temptations and a snare and a trap. And it's, Paul is trying to let us know that as Christians, God don't want us to fall into these traps of sin that the love of money causes. In verse 12, he said, Fight the what? Good fight of faith. See, our journey is a journey of faith. When we look back to Israel, their journey was a journey of faith. Amen? We are in a spiritual war and don't realize it. I was in the military and I was a soldier. And one of the things that I, I've learned is that as a soldier, a lot of times the enemy would disguise himself and try to look like your friend. He's your friend. I remember when the Iraqi war was going on, the soldiers were complaining because the Iraqi soldiers were supposed to be their allies. Mm -hmm. But the enemy would dress just like the Iraqi soldiers. So they couldn't tell the difference. They, didn't, they, they couldn't recognize the enemy, and that caused them a lot of problems for them. And this is the same thing we see in the Christian church today. Yeah. Our enemy looks just like us. For the scriptures says, in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, I believe it is. For beware of what? False prophets who come to you well in, in sheep's clothing. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. In other words, they look just like you. Yeah. They disguise themselves to look like 
a sheep when they're really a wolf. And you can't recognize them. So in order to recognize the wolf, you have to have the spirit of God in you. Because Jesus said, my sheep, what? Hear my voice. If we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Go to, with us to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to read some verses of scripture here. And listen to these verses very carefully because, like I said, you're going to see how Israel's journey from Egypt is very similar to the journey that we should be taking as Christians today. All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Read these verses. For though we walk in the flesh. For though we walk what? In the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. Listen to that. See? For though we walk in the flesh. In other words, even though we are in these natural bodies living in the flesh, we do not use the flesh in order to fight spiritual battles. Amen. We don't use the flesh in order to fight our battles because we have been born again. We are new creatures. For any man being Christ, he's a what? A new creature. Amen? Old Amen. things pass away. Uh -huh. So you can't fight the spiritual war in the flesh. Uh -huh. For though we're in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Read. For the weapons of our warfare. You see, for the weapons of our warfare. Uh -huh. The weapons that we use spiritually. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Are not carnal. They're not natural weapons. So don't look at any human being as your enemy. Don't look at any human being as your enemy. It's that spirit that is operating in the world that is using people who is your enemy. Did y'all get that? It's the spirit that is using. That's why the Bible says we should what? Love our enemies. So we don't have fight with, with natural weapons. For the weapons of our welfare, what? Not carnal, but what? But mighty through God. But mighty through God. You see, your weapon to fight spiritually is through God, and it's mighty. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? For Ephesians chapter 6, the scripture that the brother read last week in verse 12, he says, uh, Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in who? In the Lord. And in the what? Power of his might. We have a, a weapon that, that, that cannot be defeated by the enemy. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. See, we can pull down strongholds yeah. if we fight with the weapon that God gives us, which is his word. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Read. Casting down imagination. You see, the battle is in your mind. That's where the battle is at. It's not a natural battle. It's in your mind. Your spiritual battle is in your mind. Temptation comes to, to the mind. Trials come to the mind. When the devil tempts you, he comes to your mind, yeah. your thoughts. Amen? Yeah. So he's saying, read again. Casting, Casting down, down what? imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You see, you got to cast down those thoughts, those imaginations, yeah. and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You see, all this stuff you see on TV, all this stuff that we experience in the, in the world, all this entertainment you see going on in the world, that stuff exalts itself against the knowledge. If it's not working for you, then it's working against, against you. Okay? Yeah. See, see so, so we have to fight with the spiritual weapon which God gives us. Read. Amen. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see, you have to train your mind to think like Christ and bring every thought that is in your mind to the obedience of Christ. Yes. See, your thoughts, your obedience in Christ starts in your thoughts before it can be in your actions. Your obedience has to be in your mind. Amen? Yeah. This is where the war is going on. Read. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. And you be prepared to fight against everything that is trying to cause you to be disobedient. You be, you be prepared to fight against that. And if you, if you have the right weapon, then you will be victorious in your spiritual battles. You will be victorious over temptations and trials. Amen. Amen? Amen. Read. 
When your obedience is fulfilled. You see, your obedience has to be fulfilled. Yeah. In other words, you have to be obedient in order to be victorious Hallelujah. in your spiritual life. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. you have to be obedient. All right? Mm -hmm. Now let us go into the uh, Old Testament. We're going to go and look at the Old Testament, how Israel's journey from Egypt is the same journey that we are taking today as Christians. Egypt was sin and bondage. All right? Yeah. Egypt represents bondage. Israel was in bondage in Egypt. Egypt also represents the bondage of sin in the world today. We were all once what? In bondage of sin. Right. We were all once in Egypt. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yes. We were in bondage. But God called Moses mm -hmm. to lead Israel out of what? Bondage. Yeah. Moses was a type of Christ. God called Christ to lead us out of what? The bondage of sin. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Yeah. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah. Go with me now to 2 Corinthians. No, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want you all to listen to these verses very, very carefully. Because Paul is going to show us how the journey of Israel out of Egypt is the same journey that we take today as Christians out of the bondage of sin. They came out of the bondage of, of slavery under Pharaoh. We are coming out of the bondage of sin in the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Listen to these verses very carefully. Starting at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, Listen carefully, y'all. Listen at these verses. Moreover, brethren. I would not that ye should be ignorant. Don't you be ignorant. In other words, I'm finna share with you something that you need to know. Yeah. This is what Paul is saying. Mm -hmm. I am finna share with you some information you need to know. Anytime God wants us to know something, it is beneficial so that we can inherit eternal life. Yes. See, this race is not given to the yes. swift or the strong, but it's him that what endure it to the end. Yes. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be what? Ignorant. Please understand this, Paul saying. Read. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. You see, you hear that? Our fathers, in other words, our ancestors in Christ, not our natural fathers. He's talking about our ancestors in Christ. Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, Moses. He's talking about our ancestors in Christ. Yeah. The seed of Abraham who, the people who were faithful to God. You see, our fathers is Abraham. Yeah. Our fathers is Jacob. Mm -hmm. Our fathers is Moses. Right. These are the people he's talking about. That's right. He said all of our fathers passed through what? The clouds? Mm -hmm. The clouds represents the atmosphere. And through what? The and sea. The sea. They came through the sea. Yeah. The children of Israel came through the what? The Red Sea. Yeah. Read. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Y'all heard that? They were baptized in the sea. When they were led out of Egypt, they were led to the Red Sea. Yeah. And the scripture says they were baptized where? In the sea. Yeah. Now, listen to this. If you go back in history, Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. And God called Moses to lead his people, Israel, out of Egypt. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he wouldn't let the people go. That's a type of figure of Satan. Satan don't want to let you go. He wants you to stay in bondage of sin. Are y'all listening to me? Just like Pharaoh wanted the children of Israel to stay in the bondage of Egypt. But God called Moses to lead the people out. And they came to the Red Sea. Read. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. They all ate the same spiritual meat. They all, and, and see, when you, when you listen to this, I want you to think spiritually. Because your spiritual meat today is God's word. Yeah. Remember God, Jesus said, man shall not live by what? Bread, Bread alone, but by what? Every, Every word. word. That proceedeth out of the mouth of God. All Christians should be eating the same meat. Yes. But we're not. 
All Christians should be eating the same meat. Yeah. Amen? Read. Amen. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. They all drank the same spiritual drink. Read. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Are y'all listening? Amen. You see, the rock that Israel drank from was, was Christ. Yes. Let me take you through the history of Egypt so you can get it, see this clearly. When the children of Israel came to the Red Sea, they were baptized in the sea. Remember reading where Jesus, the scripture says, God told Joseph because the king Herod wanted to destroy all the firstborn. You remember reading that? Yeah. Herod wanted to destroy all the firstborn children because he wanted to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because the people said he was the king of Israel and he didn't want another, he, was, he called himself the king. He didn't want another king to reign on the throne. So he killed all the, wanted all the firstborn killed, but the angel appeared to Joseph and said, take the child Jesus to where? Egypt. Y'all get the picture? Yeah. Jesus went to Egypt. Yeah. Praise God. And when you look at this, after Pharaoh was dead, not Pharaoh, but after Herod was dead, then the angel appeared to Joseph again and said, out of Egypt, I called my son. So God called Jesus out of Egypt. And immediately when Jesus came out of Egypt, that's when his ministry began. Amen? The ministry of Christ began when he came out of Egypt. Matthew chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. You don't have to get it, but I'm going to read it. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. You see, they went into Egypt to avoid the, the child being killed. Right. Amen? Yeah. Because it was ordered by Herod that all the firstborn be killed. Verse 15 in Matthew, it says, And was there unto the death of Herod, that, he might be, it, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. It was spoken by the prophet Hosea. The same thing. God called his son out of Egypt. In other words, he called his people out of Egypt. And they went through the Red Sea. Amen. And if you look at this picture, Christ, he immediately was baptized of John in the river. I wouldn't say immediately, but later he was baptized in the, river, in the, in the Jordan River, representing the sea. All right? Amen. And after Christ was baptized in the river, let us go to Luke chapter 4, and let's see what happened. Because I want you to get this picture. I want you to see what happened with Christ is the same thing that happened with Israel and the same thing that should be happening with us today. Christ was called out of Egypt just like Israel was called out of Egypt. Luke chapter 4, verses 1. This is what happened after he was called. Yeah. Now, go, go to chapter 3 ver first. Chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. Listen to these words. Now, when all the people were baptized... It came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Jesus was baptized, all right? Yeah. Representing the sea. All right? Read. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. So I want you to see that the sea represents the new birth. The sea represents empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In other words, now that you are saved, you got to go through what we call the wilderness. The wilderness represents the world. Because if you go to Luke chapter 4, start reading there. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. And after he was full, after the Spirit descended upon him like a dove, and God said, this is my son, and whom I am well pleased. Then, Jesus being what? Full of the Holy Ghost. Ain't yes. we supposed to be full of the Holy Ghost yes. after we've been born again? Yes. We are full of the Holy Ghost. After Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost, what happened? Re 
returned from Jordan uh -huh. and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. See? Do y'all get the picture now? Israel came out of Egypt. Jesus came out of Egypt and went into the wilderness, just like Israel did. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was what? Also in Christ Jesus. In other words, you got to go through the wilderness. Let me tell you what the wilderness represents to us. The wilderness represents the world and our trials and our tribulations that we go through. You see, after you get saved, God don't sit you back in a recliner and say, everything's going to be all right. You can just sit back and relax now. You're saved. No, it don't work that way. Salvation is a process. It's a journey of faith. Yes, it is. Amen? Yes. It's a journey of faith through trials and tribulations, through the wilderness, just like Israel went through the wilderness. You see, Jesus went through the wilderness. But what happened when Jesus went through the wilderness? Read it. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. You see that? Jesus went through the wilderness and 40 days being tempted of the devil. Remember, Israel went through the wilderness for 40 what? Years. Uh -huh. See the comparison? Amazing how the scripture is, isn't it? Yes. Israel went through the wilderness for 40 years. Jesus went for 40 days. Yes. To God, a year, a day, all the same to God. Amazing. What happened when Jesus went to the wilderness? And in those days, he did eat nothing. He didn't eat nothing. When they were in the wilderness, they got hungry. Remember Israel? They got hungry? Yes. And they started complaining to Moses? Read. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. He was hungry. Israel was hungry in the wilderness, right? Yes. <laughs> you remember God fed them with manna from heaven? Yes. Manna represents the bread of life. Yes. Jesus was hungry. What happened when Jesus was hungry? And the devil said. And the who? The devil. The devil. The devil did the same thing with Israel in the wilderness. He tempted them and they wanted to eat because they were hungry. They complained like a lot of us do today. Read. And the devil said unto him, mm -hmm. if thou be the son of God, command it this stone that it be made bread. You see, the devil tempted Jesus just like he tempted Israel in the wilderness. Yes. Are y'all listening? Yes. They were tempted in the wilderness. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8 for a minute. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. I want y'all to listen to these words. Deuteronomy chapter 8 in the Old Testament, verse 2 and 3. I want you to see how... Jesus going through the wilderness is the same experience that Israel had. There's a reason why Israel had to go through the wilderness. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. There's a reason why God saved you and keeps you in here in this world. Yes. You got to go through some trials and tribulation. You got to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Yes. So you see, laying hold on eternal life is not just a, a sinner's prayer. You don't just say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Uh, I confess my sin, and then everything is all right. No, it don't work that way. You got to fight. You are in a spiritual war, and you got to fight. Paul said, I fought a good fight. Yes. That's what you got to do. You got to fight a good right. fight. Deuteronomy chapter 8, read. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee, these 40 years. Now listen, listen, God's going to tell you why he led Israel through the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the word says. These 40 years in the wilderness. And, and thou shalt remember mm -hmm. all the way which the Lord thy God led thee. Look. How many, how, how long did he lead them? Read. He led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. See what God, see why he took them through the wilderness? Yes. To humble them, to humble them. See God wants us to be humble. But we have a, a church today that is not humble. Why? But you know why they're not humble? Because they done changed their God to money. Amen. You see, people that love money are not humble. That's right. <laughs> Full of pride. Yeah. You're going to see in a minute. Mm -hmm. You're going to see this in a minute. God said, I led you, Israel, through the wilderness to humble thee. Yeah. God is keeping you here in this world and taking you through trials and tribulations to humble you. <laughs> he's chastising you. He's, he's bringing you to where he wants you to be. That's right. 
You see, for when you're weak, Paul said, then you're made strong. He said, my grace, while you're going through, is sufficient. That's what he said. His grace is sufficient while we're going through our troubles and trouble. No, Lord, we, 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 just like Israel, they were complaining to Moses. They were complaining. Y'all done brought us into this wilderness, and we ain't got nothing but this manna to eat. They were complaining, just like we do today. Amen? Amen. Complaining. Moses talked to God for God gave him manna to eat. After they complained, oh, we tired of this manna. Ain't that what they said in the wilderness? Then God fed them quails. Y'all remember that? God rained down quails and, and fed them. It was so, God, God was upset with them. He gave them so much quails and they ate and they ate and they ate and they ate until they got sick. Ain't that how we do? Y'all sitting there, I don't know I'm telling the truth. We are just like that. We are eating, eating no good well. We ain't got to go to, go to, and eat that golden corral. They eat, they eat. Oh, this is a buffet. I can eat. Just keep eating. You ain't done had enough. Just like Israel. They ate so much quail until they got sick. You sit in the buffet and keep on eating. You're going to get sick. Are y'all listening? God said, I led you in the wilderness to humble thee. Read what else he said. And to prove thee. To prove thee. It's to mold you and shape you into what I want you to be. Yes. That's what God said. That's the reason I'm taking you through. Yes. So if you're going through some trials, then you ought to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes. Amen. Amen. You ought to be strong while you're going through. Yes. For you have the spirit of God in you. Yes. He said, Lord, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. He said, I never leave you, Thank neither will I forsake you. Thank you Lord. Be strong. Because at the end of your journey, you're going to receive a crown of life. You see, your crown don't come here in this world, like a lot of Christians think because of these false preachers. Your crown don't come here. Amen? Paul said, I fought a good fight. I fought while I was on earth. I fought a good fight. And now, now that I'm finna die and leave this world, they're going to kill me. It's laid up for me a crown of life. Right. And not only for me, but for you too. Oh, if you so endure to the what? Yeah. Yeah. You got to endure this thing. Yes, right. You got to fight the fight of faith right. to the end yes. to receive this crown. Thank you, Lord. you can't give up mm -mm. while living in this world. Amen. He that draw back my soul shall have no pleasure with him, the Lord said. He says, like a dog returning to his own vomit. Yeah. Like a pig going back in the mud when he's been delivered. Y'all yeah. yeah. listen to me. Yeah. Don't you turn back. Yeah. Don't you give up now. We come too far yeah. to turn around. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Finally, my brother, be strong. Yeah. God said, I, I did this to prove you. Yeah. What else he said? To know what was I want to see where your heart is at. That's what God is told. I brought you through the wilderness 40 years. It was a 40-day journey, but God took him 40 years. He said, I want to see where your heart is at. Listen, read, read, read. Whoever thou keep his commandments. I want to see if you'll obey me or not. Ain't God something else? God is taking you through. You are left in this world. See, when God saved you, he didn't take you out of the world. He left you here to take you through the wilderness of sin, to take you through the wilderness of tribulations and trials. But you got to endure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 2, verse 15 said, he said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For the world is going to what? Pass away. Yeah. And all the lust thereof is going to pass away. But he that doeth the will of my father. Yeah. He that doeth the will of my father. He shall have eternal life. Yeah. He's not going to pass away. Yeah. Then he said after that, haven't you heard that the Antichrist spirit is coming? And it's going to lead folk astray? The Antichrist spirit is coming, he said. Yeah. Even now it's already here. And those who have the Antichrist spirit, he said, they went out from us. Why? Because they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out so that it might be known, manifest that they were not of us at all. 
But you have an unction. You have the Holy Spirit. You have something in you to make you want to move on. Make you want to keep going. Even when you don't feel like it. Hallelujah. Praise God. A brother told me, he said, brother, you keep preaching the truth on the internet. You keep preaching the truth. I know folk don't like it. They're going to they kick you off their little sites. But that's all right. You keep telling the truth. He says, keep telling the truth. Tell, t- tell God people the truth. Yes, Amen. Amen. God said, I led you yes. through the wilderness mm-hmm. to prove you, to test you, to see where you, if you keep my commandments or not. Yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Read some more. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. See, God, God make you, let you hunger for a reason. Mm-hmm. He's testing you. A lot of us, sometimes we'll say, man, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know. What am I going to do, Lord? That's just a test. That's all. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where's your faith? Yes, oh, yeah, a little faith? Yes, Where's your faith? Mm-hmm. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Yes. Neither his seed begging for bread. Yes. Never seen it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you know God that can, bring, can bring you to it? He can take you through it? Jesus. Right. Thank you, Lord. Praise Thank the Lord. Lord. I fed thee with manna. Mm-hmm. See, God will feed you. Yes, he will. Just like you do the birds of the air, he'll feed you. Yes, right. How much more will he feed you? I fed you with manna, mm-hmm. which thou knowest not. Amen. Neither did thy fathers know. Y'all yeah, didn't know where it come from, but I fed you with it. That's right. See, you don't know where your blessing's coming from, but it's coming. Hallelujah. 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 It's coming. Yeah. You just wait on the Lord. Thank they that Lord. wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle, and they shall walk and not get weary. And they shall run and not faint. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, you keep on waiting on the Lord. Uh-huh. No matter how tough it is, get wait. Yeah. Wait, I say, Thank on you, the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, I fed you. Mm-hmm. You didn't know where the bread was coming from, but I fed you. Thank you Lord. I want you to live by every word that yeah. come out of the mouth of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise Jesus went through God. the wilderness. Jesus went through, amen? Yes, he did. And we got to understand that. He went through. Yes, he did. And he was tempted of the devil. Yes, he did. Go back to Luke chapter 4. Read a little bit more here. Amen. And Jesus answered him, saying, uh-huh. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, by, but by every word of God. But we get hungry. Yeah. We got plenty to eat, don't we? We're just as blessed as we can be. That's blessed. Ain't satisfied. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Godliness with contentment is great gain. Be satisfied. No matter what state you're in, you be satisfied. The three Hebrew boys were satisfied, even though the king said, we're going to throw you all in the fire furnace if you don't fall down and worship the, the, the golden image that we set up. We ain't worshiping no image king. We're not going to do it. If you don't, I'm going to throw you in the fire. Well, throw us in the fire, king. How many of us are willing to be thrown in the fire? Oh, God don't want me to go through that. That's not God. Oh, God help me, please. Don't let me go in the fire. He said, if you go through the fire, I'm going to be with you. Yes. Wasn't he with them? Yes, he was. Hallelujah. Oh, he was with them even in the fire. The, the king did just that. They said, if you throw us in the fire, we still ain't going to bow down. If God delivers, it'll be fine. If he yeah. don't deliver, it's still going to be all right. You know why? Because they saw the city whose maker was God. They yeah. knew that their final home was not here on earth. Yeah. They knew that, right. sister. Yeah. They yeah. knew they had to leave this world. But they wanted to leave while they were in Christ. They wanted to leave in the will of God. Oh, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. They didn't want to leave here yeah. out of the will of God. Because if you do, you're in trouble. Yeah. Because the Bible says... The Bible tells us, amen. amen, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Yes. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still yes. when Christ yes. returns. But he that is holy, let him be holy still. Yes. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, and I'm going to reward every man according to his works. Yes. Right. When you leave here, you're going to get a reward yes. if you can endure to the end. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be thou faithful yes. unto death. He'll give you a crown of life. Yes, he will. Praise, 
Praise God. Praise the Lord. Jesus went through. He was hungry. Yeah. But he said, man, shall I live by bread alone? Read some more. What did he say? And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain. And then the devil took him in a high mountain. Showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. Showed him all the world. And, that, and that's what, and when we look at TV, we see all the world, don't we? Folk just entertaining us. I told y'all last week, folk that entertain you are the ones that make all the money. Yeah. Folk that entertain you are the ones that make all the money. Why do you think the devil giving them all the money? Because they're brainwashing you to believe nonsense. nonsense. Remember we read that scripture, casting out what? Every imagination, every thought that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. See, the devil's allowing them to feed you with mess. Yeah. <laughs> to entertain your flesh. Yeah. Hallelujah. But you got to cast down these imaginations. You better get into the word of God. Right. Study to show yourselves right. approved unto God. Workman's not been ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A lot of us are weak. Carnal minded. Why? Because we're not in the word. That's right. You can't just listen to what your preacher say. You better get into that word yourself. That's you right. gotta feed yourself. You can't depend on nobody to feed you. You're grown. <laughs> you grown. Feed yourself. Y'all yeah. don't hear me. That's the devil. Yeah. Hallelujah. Read some more. Showed unto him all the you see, the devil showed it all to him. Read what he said. A moment of time. Yeah. And what, what else and, happened? And the devil said unto him. See, listen what the devil said unto him, like he's saying to a lot of us. Uh -huh. All this power will I give you. I'll give you all this power. What? All this power will I give I told y'all last week. That's power in money. It would, but but, but your, when you get a lot of it, guess what? Your power comes from the devil, not God. Amen. It comes from the devil. Why do you say that, brother? Because the average person that get a lot of money, he ain't going to use it wisely. He ain't going to spend it to the glory of God. He ain't going to help the poor. He's going to glorify his flesh. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I said last week, he's going to get rid of his old, old Knickerbocker car and he's going to get him a Mercedes car. I got a lot of money now. I want to look good now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. That's what money will do for you. Make you full of pride. Make you arrogant. Make you want to glorify yourself. Yes. Amen. Yes. The devil showed it to him. Yes. What did he say? And this power will I give thee. I'll give it to you, Jesus. And the glory of thee. I'll give you all this glory. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? Yes. What else he said? For that is delivered unto me. You see, it's mine. It was given to me. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard what Satan said? Yeah. It's all this world, is, it's mine. It was given to me. Yeah. And I can give it to you. Mm -hmm. well, and, me. And to whomsoever I will, I give yet. What you say? Yeah. And whoever I want to give it to, I give it to. Yeah. And you notice who he give it to? The folk that won't do no work. Uh, Football players don't work. Uh, huh? Yeah. Denzel Washington don't work. I ain't never, I, you know he ain't going to no field and do no work. He might send somebody to do it for it. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. This is the way it is. The devil give it to who he want. He give it to folk who don't deserve it. Cause, Cause folk don't deserve a lot of money who don't work. That's the way it should be. Folk that don't work making all the money. Entertaining folk. All you gotta do is sing. Make a lot of money. Did that make sense? Yeah. Then the Mexican get out there and work hard all his life in the sun and he can't make nothing. Barely can make it. Then folks singing. They call it acting. Y'all, if you look up the word acting, acting ain't nothing but hypocrisy. Because you're acting. You're not being real. That's the kind of folk they, the devil rewards. He says, I don't mind to give, and I can give it to whoever I want to give it to. Y'all listen to what the devil said? Yeah. So if you take it from me, guess what you got to do? You got to sell your soul. It comes with a price. He said, what profit is it to a man that if he gained the whole world, then die and lose his soul? What can he give in exchange for his soul? If you seek to save your life, in other words, if you seek to save your life with the world and its goods, you shall lose it. Right. But he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Right. 
Now go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to read some more there. I want to finish up. I have so much I want to share. But go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen. Hallelujah. Read some more there. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. God was not pleased with a lot of these Israelites yeah. when they went through the wilderness. He wasn't pleased with them. Because mm-hmm. they murmured, they grumbled, and complained. Read. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. You see what happened? They were overthrown in the wilderness. What else happened? Now these things were our examples. See what Paul said? Mm-hmm. What happened to them is an example unto you. I'm going to say that again. What happened to Israel in the wilderness is an example unto you. Read some more. To the intent we should not lust after evil things. What? Y'all heard that? Yeah. What happened to them happened for our example so that we won't do what they did. Lusting after what? Evil things. Read some more. As they were lusted. As they did. This, this, This is powerful. Read. Neither be ye idolaters. Don't you be, don't you idolize stuff? Right. Don't you idolize these material things? Yeah. Like they did? Read. As were some of them. As some of them. Read. As it is written. As it is what? Written. The word says this. Read. The people sat down to eat and drink. The people did what? Sat down to eat and drink. And then what else they were did? And rose up to play. What you say? Yeah. That word play means entertain themselves. Don't yeah. y'all know hear this? Yes. That's what folk love today. They love entertainment. Yeah. They go to church not to be entertained. Yeah. Oh, that cry. No, they sound good. Yeah. I love, oh man, her voice. Oh. Yeah. Y'all, y'all see them play dancing? Oh man. This is the kind of nonsense you see in church today. That's right. This stuff don't help you to live right. Mm-mm. Y'all hear me? Yes. They, who glory. Mm-hmm. I want you to go back and read that again because I want y'all to get this. Yes. What did it say, sister? Neither be ye idolaters. You see, when you idolize stuff, yes. stuff will cause you to entertain yourself. Oh. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you must fast. Fast, then not who? Yourself. Take up your cross. In other words, prepare to go through something. Yes. This is the way it is. Mm-hmm. But they got a lot of stuff, and then what did they do? Mm-hmm. What did they read? Neither be ye idolaters. Don't as idolize well. stuff, because when you idolize stuff, here's what's going to happen. As were some of them. Uh huh. As it is written. As it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. When you idolize stuff, all you do is glorify your flesh. People with a lot of money, they just that's what they do. They entertain, they play, they eat. Stuff that costs you. See, you can go to the store and get a steak <laughs> for twelve, thirteen dollars. They pay fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, hundred dollars for a steak. Same steak. <laughs> Cause they got a lot of money. They can do that. Y'all listening? When, it, when the Bible say it is written, it's talking about it's in the Old Testament. Yeah. It's saying that the Old Testament tells you this. Are y'all listening? That's right. Praise God. Praise God. They Lord. ate and they rose up to play. What else it says? Neither let us commit fornication. What? Neither let us commit fornication. Read. As some of them committed. See, they did that. That's what they did. It happened to them for our example that we won't do the same thing. Read. And fell in one day three and twenty thousand. They fell. Three and twenty thousand. They went through the wilderness, but the Bible clearly tells you that they didn't make it to the promised land. Promised land represents heaven for us. A lot of folk think they're going to make it to heaven and they ain't going to make it. Just like Israel didn't make it through the, through the wilderness. Because you can't live right in this world. Huh? That's right. If you can't be a good steward over what God gives you and then does for you in this world, how are he going to give you things that pertain to eternal life? If you can't handle the, the riches of this world, then how are you going to handle the riches of God, which is eternal life? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, the next part I want y'all to get. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 21. 
chapter 32, I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 32. I'm going to close with this. Because I want you to get this. This is what happened to Israel. This is what happened to Israel. And it's happening in the church today. Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. What does it say? And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Stop. Y'all heard that? Amen. When the people saw that Moses, what? Delayed to come from the mountain. See, Moses went into the mountain to hear from God. Yeah. Watch the analogy. Jesus went back to heaven to prepare a place for us. Yes, he did. So that where he is, we can be also. He went back to heaven, and, we, and he left us here. And while, he, while he's gone, we're supposed to be sitting waiting on him to come back, right? Mm -hmm. But what happened to the people in Moses' day, when he left and went into the mountain, when Jesus went back to heaven, the same thing happened today. Read, read the scripture. And said unto him, up, make us God. What you say? <laughs> Here's what Israel said. They talked to Aaron. You see, Aaron was in charge after Moses was gone, just like the preachers are in charge after Christ is gone. And the folk were saying to the preachers even today, having itchy ears, they want some sugar-coated gospel. They want to please their flesh. Preacher, we want you to preach us something that, that's going to satisfy us. So that's what the preachers do. They came up with the entertainment gospel. But they, they came up with this prosperity stuff to entertain the people because that's what they want. And the people turned them Aaron and said, Aaron, what did they say to Aaron? Uh, Make us some gods. Yeah. <laughs> we, want a, we want a tangible God. Yeah. We want a God that we can feel and touch. We don't want no God that we got to have faith in. Wait on him. Oh, y'all know hear me this morning? We won't want a God that we got to wait for we can't see. We want us a tangible God. We want to feel our God. More, Aaron, make us a God. What did they say? Which shall go before us. Which shall do what? Go before us. In other words, they mean take care of us. Y'all don't hear this this morning. They want a God that's going to take care of them in the flesh. Read, read. For as this Moses. For this who? Moses. Now look what the hottie called it. This Moses. This Moses. Glory. Ain't these folks about? Lee, yeah. read. The man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Jesus, this Jesus who saved us, he done left us here to go through all this mess. Y'all yeah. hear me this morning? Yeah. Jesus done left us here to go through some troubles and trials. He shouldn't have done that. Out of Egypt. What did it say? Read. We what not what we what Where is he? <laughs> Where is Jesus? Yeah. Where is he? He been saying he coming back for the longer. Where is he? Oh, we used to preach this as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the covenant of the Son of Man. They don't stop preaching that because what? They're saying now, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Yeah, let's make us some gods. Mm -hmm. Let's entertain ourselves with some praise dance. Let's make us a praise. I remember when there was no such thing as a praise team. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Everybody sung yeah. to the glory of God. Right. Y'all remember how it was? Yes. yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We'll get up and testify and we'll start singing our song of how good God be. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't hear it as much. Yeah. But now we got to listen to a praise team. Yes. The best singer. I remember when the old ladies, the old guys, and they couldn't sing a lick. They'll get up though, and they were so serious though. Yes, they they, oh, they, they meant it from their heart. Yes, I yes. see folk get up to testify, and you say, oh, Lord, I hope they don't sing. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but they bust out. Yeah. I promise the Lord. Yes. But y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yes, right. That I. And they held out too. Yes, Couldn't yes. sing it, but they held out. Yes, yes. Yes. Lord. Lord have mercy. Yes. Am I right, Brother B? Yes, sir. Yes. Read, read what it say. And 
Aaron said unto them. And Aaron said unto them. Now listen to what the preacher said. Aaron, the preacher that's left now, Moses is gone. He's the, he, he's the type and figure of Christ. He's gone back to heaven. Christ gone back to heaven. Moses gone. Now we got the preachers. And, then they, and the preacher, here's what the preacher said. Listen, listen to what the preacher said. Break off, break off the golden earring. What you say? Bring all this stuff. All your material stuff. Bring it here. Which are in the ears of your wife. Oh, what you say? Of your sons. Uh huh. And of your Well, daughter. bring all, in other words, bring all your valuables. Bring it unto me. Bring all your valuables. What do you say? And bring them unto me. Bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden and they did, they, they did what the preacher said. Go ahead, read. Which were in their ears uh -huh. and brought them unto Aaron. They brought them to him, and what happened? And he received them at their hands. Uh huh. And fashioned it with a graven tool. After he had made it a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel. What you say? Now they call this stuff their gods. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the way it is today. Y'all remember me reading in Revelations chapter 3 in the church of Laodicea when Jesus told the church, he said, you are not hot, you're not cold, but you're lukewarm. Why are you lukewarm? Because you're rich. You have a lot of stuff. And you think you got it made. You think you're blessed. But you don't know you're wretched and you're naked and you're poor. Church is naked and poor because I always think about now as a big bank account. Money in the bank. That's the blessings now, you see. That's the blessings of the church. And they just holler, oh, we got so much in the bank, we're blessed. Folk living like devils. And they talk about they're blessed. Folk have no power over temptation and sin. And they hollering their bliss. Mm -hmm. Homosexuals sitting up in the church on the organ, all in the choir, and they talk about their bliss. Mm -hmm. You ain't blessed, you're wretched, you're naked, you're poor. Right. Yeah. You're worthless in the sight of God. Yeah. Let anything come in. Yes. Yeah. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Women walking in the church now with, with nothing on. Mm -hmm. Hardly nothing on. Mm -hmm. Just put it. Pull it down. Amen. You gotta put some more, more, more thread in it. Cult in it. You can't pull it down when there ain't nothing there. Right. This is the way it is, though. Yeah. This is the way it is. They made the golden cap. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Read verse 5. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Now look at what these crazy, these crazy folks are doing. I gotta, I gotta call them crazy. They did all this crazy stuff, these idol worshiping, and they're gonna say that they're gonna make it a feast to the Lord? Yeah. Just like we do today. We, we bring all this entertainment in the church and we're gonna call that worship? Huh? A homosexual playing the organ, you call that worship? Oh, y'all listen to me. Amen. Homosexual directing the choir, and you calling that worship? A feast to the Lord? Read some more, Sherry. And they rose up early on the morrow. Uh-huh. And offered burnt offerings. Uh -huh. and, and brought peace. So they offered all this stuff they offered it under the Lord. Yeah. And all, and we're offering a lot of mess to the Lord today. Yes. But read, read. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. You see? That's why Paul said it was written. Because yes. he was telling you it was in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Read some more. And the Lord said unto Moses. And the Lord said to Moses. Go. Go. Go, Moses. Get thee down. Get down there. Get down there to the people. Yes. For thy people. For the people. Which thou brought us out of the land the of Egypt. The people that you brought out of Egypt, what happened? Have corrupted themselves. What you say? Yes. Amen. They're corrupt. Yes. They're evil. They made a golden cow. Yes. Y'all go down to the Federal Reserve Building and see what's sitting outside. You got it. Say it loud. A golden cow. Golden calf. 
Go to the Federal Reserve where they print the money. That's their motto. That's their, their seal, their emblem, the calf. The calf, back in the old days, was like a god to the people. Why? Because the calf was an animal, a very expensive animal. It was an animal that, that brought them food, milk. And the calf was an animal that was worshipped. So they made it the emblem of worship today. It is the symbol of money today. Is that a coincidence? Huh? That the calf is a symbol of money and the church, all they want to do now is raise up money, then have a feast unto the Lord. Y'all hear me this morning? Three. Told Moses to get down there to them folk. They done corrupted themselves. Read. They have turned aside quickly. They have turned aside. Uh, out of the way which I commanded them. They're not going like I wanted them to go. They're not doing what I told them to do. Read. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it. People worship money today in the church. They worship money. They worship materialism. That's what they want. Read. And have sacrificed Thereunto, and they're sacrificing to it. Read. And said, mm -hmm. These be thy gods, O Israel. This is what we want. This is what we need. The pastor even said that. Bring your tithes and your offer. This is what we gotta have. We gotta have it. We gotta have it because we need it in order for the church to function. Yes. What happened to having God yes. in order to function? You yes. see, they done got the wrong God. Y'all don't hear me. They got the wrong God. You don't need money to function in the church. Jesus didn't have no money. The pastors didn't have no money. But they had the power of God. They had the anointing. Hallelujah. They had the anointing so great, Paul would just walk in the streets and the people would be healed from his shadow. Y'all hear me this morning? They had the power of the living God. I mean, the power of God was in them so great. When the people in Mars Hill saw them, they said, Hey, this power that they have, we want it. So they went trying to, they tried to get it. They said, oh, well, let's call on this name Jesus like Paul did. And then the devil told him, he said, Paul, I know, but who in the world is you? Who are you? You see, you got to have the anointing to call on this name. Hallelujah. Anybody can't do it. Yeah. yeah, they were trying to, oh, let's call on this, this Jesus who Paul is calling on. And let's get some of this power. Uh -huh. They said, who in the world y'all think y'all here? Yeah. <laughs> y'all, honey, you ain't Paul, you ain't Jesus. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. I want to keep going. Yeah. The people rose up to play. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. Go down to verse 21. And Moses said. Now, now this is after Moses came out to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Here's what he said to Aaron. You saw, cause you heard what Aaron had done, right? Yeah. Now read, now read. And Moses said unto Aaron. Uh-huh. What did these people, what did this people unto thee? Now what, what in the world did you let these people do to you? <laughs> you supposed to, you supposed to watch out for them while I was gone. What you, what you let these people do to you? Here's not the preachers are in the same situation. But they want their church full of folk. And they don't care how the folk live no more. No. They don't want no 10 or 15. <laughs> they want a crowd. Wow. But the Bible says, why is the gate? Yeah. That leads to destruction. And many will there be that go in that way. Yeah. Strike narrow is the way that leads to life. Yeah. And only a few. So if you got a few, you might be doing something right. You got a crowd, you better look. <laughs> you got a crowd, you probably got problems. You got a lot of sinners, that's what you got. Read, read. That thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. Upon them. Read. And Aaron said. Look, what, look, look, look at what the preacher said now. Hear what the preacher saying, because cause the cause Moses has come back. Christ come back. Hear what the preacher's going to be saying then, too. Read, read. Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Lord, don't be angry with me. <laughs> don't be angry. Read. Thou knowest the people. You knew how the people were. <laughs> now you want to blame the people, see? Yeah. Aaron, Aaron listened to.
to the folk. Now he want to blame them for the mess they done caused. Read. That they are set on mischief. See, they're set on mischief just like we are today. They don't, we don't want to do right. That's why we study no second coming. They preaching about no second coming. Bring some prosperity. Bring in some money. That's what they're preaching. They ain't thinking about no second coming. Read. For they said unto me. Now look, look what the people said unto me. Make us gods. Make us gods. We shall go before us. See, what shall go before us? For as for this Moses. For this, this Moses again now. The man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> We, what not, what we don't know where he's at. Him. We don't know where he at. He done gone and left us. Mm -hmm. You see, when they got in the wilderness, these people mumbling and grumbling so much, they even told Moses at one time, won't you let us go back into yeah. Egypt? Because we had good food there. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to eat no manna and quail. We had good food. We had watermelon, kettle oh, <laughs> You see, fruit, fruit was a, a, was a was a specialty to the kings and to the people in the world back then. Hallelujah. Read. And I said unto them, mm -hmm. Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. <laughs> so they gave it to me. Uh -huh. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. <laughs> I cast it into the fire. Don't y'all know fire represents trials? In other words, we don't want to go through trials Fire represents trials in the scripture. And we don't want to go through the fire. We want the stuff, the materialism, to bring us out of the fire mm -hmm. instead of God. Are y'all listening? Yeah. Read, read. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them. Remember Jesus said the church is naked? Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Y'all see the comparison? Yes. Jesus told the church, you're naked, you're poor. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of wealth. Riches. This stuff is great. Come on, read. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Mm -hmm. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. Mm -hmm. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together. In these last days, that is what's happening right now. A lot of folk are turning from this traditional stuff that doesn't help them to live righteous and godly. Yeah. People are thirsty yeah. for truth now. Yeah. And Moses is saying to the people, who's on the Lord's side? Mm -hmm. yeah. And preachers like me today are saying, who is on the Lord's side? Amen. Are you willing to stand up for what is right? Yeah. 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 Or are you going to stay and be entertained and call it worship? Read. And he said unto them, uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God. Now here's what God had to say. Mm -hmm. Read. Listen. Put every man his sword by his side. Uh -huh. And go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp. And slay every man his brother. And every man his companion. And every man his neighbor. Hmm. Wow. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Read verse 27. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Put every man his sword by his side. Uh -huh. And go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother. And every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Y'all hear that? God is going to punish this world. Exodus chapter 32, verse 30. I'm going to read it till I'm going to close here. And it came to pass on the morrow. Exodus 32 and 30. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass on the next day that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin. Yeah. And now I will go up unto the Lord and pre-adventure, and perhaps I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. See, money. See, that's what, was, that's what represented money back then. Okay? Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sins, and if not, 
Not me. I pray thee out of thy book which thou has written. Ain't Moses something else? Mm -hmm. Humble man. Mm -hmm. Lord, punish me in their place. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. Ain't that what Jesus said? Yes. You got your stuff. Y'all see the stuff? Yes. Moses was a type of Jesus, and he said, punish me in their place. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what Jesus said? Yes, he did. Thank what you, is Lord. this something else? Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I what? Blot out of my book. Revelations chapter 20, 21 says the same thing. If you are living in sin, you're going to be blotted out of the book of life. Your name will not be there. You got to fight the fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. You got to fight to win, to be a winner in this spiritual war. Amen. The things that happened to Israel were for your example, so that we might not do the things they did, that we might not live like they lived. Are y'all listening? Yeah. Praise God. And we pray that God will bless you to live righteous and godly in this present world. Amen.